So, still doing drinking videos. We are. I don't know what order these are going to be uploaded in, so just sporadically we're just going to be drunk. Every now and then it's just going yeah. to be, here's a mistake video, welcome. Well, this is perfect for you, Lucas, because you know what we're talking about. Mistakes? Video games. What kind of games do you like to play, Lucas? You know, I play a hell of a lot of Destiny 2. Destiny 2. Um, my favourite, like, franchise is, like, Zelda and Pokemon. Okay. So a lot of Nintendo stuff, and then a hell of a lot of Destiny as well, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, so I've been getting really into narrative-driven games. Oh, yeah, true. They're, um, you know, you can, call, you can get through them in a few sessions, mm -hmm. and they're really fun to edit back, because you get to sort of revisit the story and see things you don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, recently, there was a game I played through, which is over on my gaming channel. I'll talk a bit about that at the end. But there's a game that I play it's called Firewatch. Are you aware of Firewatch? Yes, because I've played part of it in the Stanley Parable Ultra Double. Yes! Yeah, yeah it does appear in that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess maybe a lot of people who haven't played Firewatch might have seen it from that. But Firewatch did very well. It was a very successful game. It was yeah. very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that period where it was review bombed. But let's not talk about that. Firewatch is uh, an interesting game because... It was born from a single painting. Like, as in just the painting made the game, programmed everything? Uh, no, no, what I mean is that the entire aesthetic and that everything was built from that came from a painting that was done by one of the people who worked for the studio. Was it the one painting that they used for all the promo art? I think yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's a painting, like, so obviously it'll be behind me, probably on this side, because I imagine I'll do the game on that side. Because, yeah, like, the game box art, all the promo art, it seems to focus on, like, that one sunset picture. Yes, it's like an, like an orangey sunset with the tower in the middle. Yeah. So what happened was the people who made the game are a company called... Campo Santo. That's it. They recently got... Well, not... Relatively recently got acquired by Valve. They did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Campo Santo was a studio that was started by Sean Vanneman and Jake Rodkin. So these two are people who worked as co-writers on Telltale's The Walking Dead. Right, yeah. Which, obviously, that game got praised for the story and for how that well it like did. like, one of the Game of the Years of 2012, yeah. Yeah, and it was one of the games that set Telltale off in that direction, where they were starting to make more of these sort of... That was of... the big shift for them. It like, was, yeah. Going from, like the salmon marks and like jurassic park and back to the future mm. to like all of a sudden they were like a massive name yeah so obviously um with, with this success that these two had they decided they were going to break off and make their own company which is where campo santo came from but they didn't have a game enter ollie moss so uh, ollie moss uh, painted the image that you see over my shoulder here this like lovely landscape with this tower on it. You can see and it now, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it, it's amazing. Like, let's just, should we all just appreciate it for a second? You've got to give a knowing nod while you take a sip of your rum. There is rum in there, we promise. <laughs> it's just... There is rum in here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this painting was then uh, turned into the game, essentially. And the story of the game, which is about, I made a few notes, I made plenty of notes, because, you know, I, I like this game, I wanted to talk about it. Uh, it's stories about Henry, who is a guy who goes off to find a job out of the way after uh, some stuff. I thought you were like uh, some kind of like national park god, like bouncer. I don't know what you call well, the people that like protect the land. You sort like... of are. So the way the story of the game works is that there's a character called Henry who went through some shit and wanted to get away from that shit. So he went off to get a job working as one of these lookouts. Mm. And while he's there, he gets in contact with somebody who works in a different lookout tower called Delilah. And from your lookout tower, you can see across, you can see Delilah's tower. And the two of you communicate through the radios. So and it's like pretty much the whole game is like radio conversations while you're walking. It around, is, yeah. So it? you're yeah. moving between locations, you're having a chat. The game looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can see from the artwork, like this is, the game was built from this artwork. So, yeah, it's really nice artwork. Yeah, yeah, so you end up with this incredibly like lush, beautiful environment to wander around. And then the, there's this plot that runs through of like these strange goings on and it gradually builds up and up. And you have to sort of try and figure out what's happening mm. and whether or not you're in danger because there's a lot of suspicious like i said there's a lot of stuff going on in the background there's like somebody watches you and your cat your tower gets broken into at one is point it's like watching you it, no there is a fire at one point though you do watch a fire you watch a fire not yeah. a fire watching you no you do watch the fire slightly less exciting that way <laughs> it's like been way more enticing if like you just told me right now that like the spoiler, the plot twist at the end of the game, 
is that living a fire, fire. A living fire has been like stalking you and watching you throughout your journey. <laughs> Lucas, I'm sorry that I've ruined the potential <laughs> game I for know you. I've been ruined a tiny bit. <sighs> One of the things that obviously with Fact Fiend is a very personality driven show, mm. and with Carl being in front of the camera the majority of the time, like so far, like 90% of the time, like 99% of the time, I don't think. Like, I think with one or two videos we've been in. I mean, what? There's like at least over 500 videos. Oh, five, there's, there's, there's a thousand videos on this channel. I was going to, like, last yeah. thing is, I remember going through to look for, like, something to do for Truth Devil on the side channel. Yeah. And I got, like, oh shit, I'm on, like, 550 <laughs> videos back now. Yeah. So, yeah, as I was saying, like, it's, it's personality driven. So, all the articles that Carl writes are things that he's interested in, which means that there's some topics that we never get to discuss unless we bring them up in the video. And such as, like, for this one, a game I really enjoyed playing. So I actively sought out something interesting about this game so that I could, you know, talk about it. Yeah, um, and like, you know, for example, One Piece, which people keep requesting, and I keep telling people I'll do when I'm caught up, because I'm like 200 episodes behind still. There you go, you've had a promise you're going to get a One Piece I keep Piece saying it, and I don't know whether it gets caught on videos <laughs> or not, but I keep being like, we'll do One Piece when I catch up with One Piece. Promise. I just don't want spoilers. <laughs> so I mentioned a couple of times I played through this game, and uh, it's the per this is the perfect opportunity for me to plug my gaming channel and I guess my Twitch stream as well. But the gaming channel for now. So the gaming channel, I, I don't get many views in the games, but I the thing is I have a massive library of games, mm -hmm. and I'm like I'm one of those people who will see a game on sale, buy it, never, never play, play it. it. Yeah, and, goes on the shelf. Yeah, and also Epic Games gives away like a free game every week or so. Yeah. And I've got almost all of them. Yeah, so you like, showed me earlier you've got like 250 <laughs> games and yeah. like you've basically bought none of them. I think I bought one. So there's 250 games and I bought one of them. Uh, and also I've got Xbox Game Pass. So there's tons of games in there that I also there's want to play. There's another like 250 games on <laughs> yeah. there. And I had quite a sheltered childhood when it came to some of the bigger games. So I only had a PlayStation... The only PC games I played were Sims and CSI. Oh, and Age of Empires. So there's a lot of games. You just threw the Sims and CSI together as if they're both big, massive PC games. I loved CSI. Right, but you can admit it's no fucking Sims. Excuse me, getting to go along with Gil Grissom. Who the fuck? And, and solve crime. How? Dare you. Gil Grissom. I know that Robin. Judge him in the Was comments. in one of them, right? Robin? From Batman and Robin. Chris O'Donnell. Chris O... Was he? Was it CSI? It was one of those ones. CSI. Gil Grissom, the entomologist, in charge of the team. He's got some great people. He's got Warren Brown. He's got one Nick of, Stokes. One of those shows like CSI, like DSF. DFS, they've got NCIS. sales on. NCIS. He was on, I remember Chris O'Donnell. That's like the only ever, like thing I've seen him <laughs> outside of being fucking Robin in that awful movie. He was also awful, awful in, movies. he played D'Artagnan in the Three Musketeers movie. He was an episode of uh, Two and a Half Men. You're not like bringing up his rankings in any way by mentioning these things. I, th th that Three Musketeers movie is great. You know, I'm going to make a video about that at some point because I really like that movie. So anyway, There's not enough swashbuckling, sword-swinging movies out there. There has been a lack of, like, Zorro-esque movies yeah. for a long Z time. you got Zorro, you got Pirates of the Caribbean, you got The Three Musketeers, like, like Princess whatever Bride kind of... Princess Bride has some bit, elements of it, yeah. Bit, yeah. Um, and I just... You want... But modern times, like, Puss in Boots is probably the closest we've got. Yeah. See, it was just Zorro in Shrek. Yeah. That's on the calendar, by the way. We'll do a Puss in Boots video. Anyway. Uh, there was, so, there were there were a lot of games that I didn't get to play as a kid. So, like, I didn't have the Nintendo consoles, the Xbox consoles. So, only recently, within the last couple of years, have I played Halo. The first Halo. Well, okay. Did you play, like, the remake? Yeah, it was the... Um, combat well no that's the name of it isn't it what's it called the master chief collection it was that I think games like half-life i only played recently bioshock i only played recently okay and there's tons of these games that are still on my list so the, my gaming channel and my twitch stream are for me to go back and play these games i never got to play so i'm going to be playing i don't know when this video is going to come out so we've recorded quite a lot today but i'm going to be playing uh, bioshock or half-life 2 at some point soon like to buy bioshock 2 Bioshock um, 2, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to be streaming those, and then what I do is I edit those playthroughs, and they go on my gaming channel. 
So we'll say recommendation: Bioshock Two. Make sure you play the DLC. Minerva's Den. Is that <laughs> just pulled your mic out? Don't drink, kids. Ah! Is it still working? That's fifteen. Uh, how can I tell? It's still I, recording. I uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, he's pulled his mic out. We actually don't know if he's still recording. So it, the, the video is still recording. Yeah, but I don't know if you are. So you, what we'll, we'll just close this off. We'll just say my gaming channel is called Overdog. It's a silly username that I got like 10 years ago and I'm I'm stuck with it now. So uh, you can find a link to that up there. Okay, use your URLs. Sorry. I mean, I don't even know if I've named it properly. It's probably called like youtube.com forward slash uxcv017 something. Twitch.tv forward slash. Overdog. So that, that's the one that's the Twitch stream one. So if you want to watch me play live, it's there. We I chat to people. I've got a lot of points, rewards and stuff. And then uh, the gaming one is the, the archive of the stuff. But I do edit those down. So they are like cleaner playthroughs. So it seems we talked about Firewatch. I'd recommend that one. I have a lot of fun with that. I make friends with the Pinecone. It's great. And uh, yeah, if you want to watch any of the old ones, then go ahead. Like Nisha and I have a Minecraft series on there, which we're going to try and finish soon, but that's been spanning like three years. I want to come in and ruin it all.